The DNR's annual fall color finder has been launched and signs are pointing to glorious fall color and in many areas bountiful hunting seasons. Joining me in the studio to discuss our state's abundant natural resources is the commissioner of the DNR, Tom Landwehr. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, in our recent state fair program, we asked some senators what makes Minnesota so great and many responded with our state's natural resources. So where are we as a state right now? You know, um, I couldn't agree more. We are very, very fortunate in Minnesota to, to have this great slate of natural resources, public natural resources that we all get to take advantage of. And, and so I think of, when I think of public natural resources, the things the DNR manages, it's like state parks and trails, it's state forests, it's state public water accesses, it's fish and game, it's, it's all of those things that belong to all of us. And, you know, I would say by and large, we are in very good shape. I mean, we have uh, an abundance of good habitat. Uh, most of our populations are in good shape. We are very, very fortunate in Minnesota to have a populace that cares about natural resources. So we have a legacy amendment that's pumping money into conserving those natural resources. So, uh, you know, by and large, I think we are viewed as an island of, you know, a good uh, natural resource management, good natural resources opportunities. And I think, uh, you know, the, the population expects that, wants it, and I think have uh, shown they're going to put their money up for it. You know, I read recently about the wild rice harvesting. I know that season is wrapping up. Can you talk a little bit about that and how that season has been? You know, one of the really great things about Minnesota is that we have four distinct seasons. And so we, everybody's up at the lake during the summer, right? But uh, for me, the fall kicks off when the wild rice season starts. It's August 5th is technically the first day that you can pick wild rice, but lakes come into maturity uh, on their own at different points in time. And so I typically go out uh, about Labor Day each year. I'll go out and pick rice and had an opportunity to do that twice with some friends this year. The wild rice uh, crop was phenomenal. Uh, if, you've, if you've never seen a wild rice lake, it looks like a hayfield when it is really thick. You can hardly see the water, it's very thick. And uh, it's not uncommon to go out, uh, as my buddy and I did, and pick two or 300 pounds of rice uh, that uh, then turns into about 150 pounds of processed rice. And very good year all across the state. And so uh, really, really a, a phenomenal way to kick off the fall. And then we jump right into the small game seasons and the, and the uh, uh, pheasant season and the duck season and all those things. So it is a, it's a very exciting time of year. Uh, we would not have it if we didn't have a fall. Speaking of pheasant season, tickets to the governor's pheasant hunting opener banquet are now available. Uh, it's on October 13th and you'll be there in Marshall. The August roadside survey showed that the pheasant population is down by 26 percent. So why is that and what can be done to reverse that? You know, uh, there's a number of things that are, that are affecting pheasant populations, but I think uh, one of the uh, rewarding things for me as commissioner is back in 2014, Governor Dayton said, you know, I'm concerned about the decline of pheasants. I'm concerned about the uh, subsequent decline of pheasant hunters. Convened a group of 350 conservation agricultural interests and said, you know, what can we do about that? And the rewarding thing for me in that process was that people understood the limiting factor for pheasants is habitat. And for pheasants, it's fundamentally grass and wetlands because they need grass to nest in and feed in and they need wetlands to overwinter in. And so the, uh, when we see the populations of pheasants go up and down, uh, more recently they've been going down more often than going up. Uh, it's directly tied to the loss of grass on the landscape of Minnesota. Uh, not just sort of private pasture grass, but in Minnesota we were fortunate uh, 10 years ago to have two million acres of conservation reserve program land, CRP land, under the farm bill. We've lost half of that, and as we've lost half of that, you can see a direct correlation between the number of pheasants that are harvested and the amount of grass on the landscape. So it's, it's that loss of CRP. Uh, it's, sometimes it's aggravated by weather. If we get a wet spring or a bad winter, uh, that can hurt pheasant populations, but we've been fairly fortunate the last couple of years to have reasonably good winter and spring. So I think you know most of our biologists will tell you it's just a lack of habitat out there. And there are a number of things that we're doing right now to try and increase that habitat. You know, the gov governor's buffer initiative was one of those. We've got a conservation reserve enhancement program uh, going on now through the Board of Water and Soil Resources that so could have 60,000 acres. That would be to try to get that CRP land back up again? Get more grass back on the landscape, primarily on private lands, because most wildlife comes off of private lands, and we need the private landowners to partner with to get that uh, habitat on the ground. Over the weekend, uh, it was the waterfowl hunting opener, over the very hot weekend that we had. What is the projection for the, that level of wildlife? You know, uh, one of the interesting things about ducks uh, is that they are an international species. And so most of the ducks that we shoot in Minnesota actually come from Canada or the Dakotas. 
So uh, when we have uh, an early warm season like this, the fact is we don't have a lot of those birds yet in Minnesota. They come through when the weather starts getting cold and the, and the wind starts blowing. And so when we have you know, really record warm temperatures like we did over the weekend, the ducks that we're seeing are those ducks that were hatched and born and raised uh, on, on those ponds. And, and that is not, frankly, necessarily a lot of ducks, in, in particular for the same reasons I just mentioned with pheasants. There's not a lot of grass out there for ducks to nest in. Uh, so having said that, uh, the continental population of ducks is still pretty darn good. Uh, the state population fluctuates a little bit depending on the waters, down a little bit. But the, uh, the harvest projections for the year are going to be good, but I suspect that over the weekend they were pretty dismal because it was 90 degrees out. Ducks don't fly when it's hot. Uh, people were hunting in shorts, you know, and <laughs> were being eaten by mosquitoes. And, and I know myself, I was out in southwest Minnesota, I just did not see many birds flying. So I suspect the opener was, was probably pretty mixed, which it always is, but probably not the best opener ever. Not ideal conditions, but if fall ends up arriving, it should improve. Exactly. Every time we get a cold front coming through from Canada, it will push birds from the Canada and the Dakotas into Minnesota. Well, archery season has begun. Firearm season begins in November uh, for deer hunting. Uh, there's also a special season I read for MEA break for youth uh, ages 10 to 15. So how is the deer population right now? Uh, the deer population this year is really, really good. Uh, recall a couple of years ago, I think it was 2013, 2014, we had two really severe winters back to back. In fact, uh, winter was so bad up in northern Minnesota, we had so much snow for such a long period of time, we were working with uh, private uh, landowners and private citizens to feed deer to help get them through the winter. Uh, the good news is we've had two mild winters now back to back that uh, has increased deer survival dramatically. And in addition, we reduced the number of uh, antlerless permits that we issued each of the last two years. So we had more uh, does overwintering and coming you know, into uh, breeding in the next spring. So we've had two years to build that herd back up, and right now it is very good. So the, the uh, number of uh, permits that we issue this year for shooting antlers deer is up dramatically. Uh, we're hearing anecdotal reports of a lot of deer being, uh, being seen, and I'm optimistic that we're going to have a pretty darn good season once the, once the firearm season opens. One last question. Uh, in researching this segment, I discovered a program called Becoming an Outdoors Woman that was started by the DNR back in 1994 and offers a range of courses from deer hunting, archery, sled dog training, campfire building. How popular is this program and is it helping to diminish the reported decline in outdoorsmanship? Uh, absolutely immensely helpful. You know, the uh, nationally, as well as in Minnesota, there's been kind of a long-term decline in people participating in outdoor recreation. Not just hunting and fishing, but camping and you know even uh, road, uh, mountain biking and all kinds of outdoor activities. Uh, we have been concerned about that for a long time. We at DNR and we in the con conservation community, in part because when people don't participate in outdoor recreation, they don't care about the outdoors and, they, and we have less support for the critical programs we need. So Becoming an Outdoors Woman was launched back in, as you mentioned, the 1990s, in part because at the time we could see the demographics. You know, the, the primary participants in many of these outdoor recreations at the time were middle-aged white males. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that demographic is becoming less and less a percent of the population. And so uh, what better way to bring in new uh, people than bring in women, including moms and sisters and wives and, and uh, a whole demographic that uh, till now had not been uh, widely courted, if you will, for these activities. So Becoming an Outdoors Woman was established, been very, very popular. I think one of the uh, measures and metrics we can look at is that the growth in, uh, in hunter numbers uh, that we've seen over the last few years has been largely uh, driven by women uh, entering the sport. So, so we know that, uh, you know, given the opportunity, uh, women will participate. Given the opportunity, they will, they will bring the rest of the family with. And we're just uh, delighted with the success of the program. Commissioner Landwehr, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here.